Yeah, Ross Barnett, Deputy Commissioner, Specialist Operations. One, two, three. Are we good to go? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We just wanted to give you a bit of an update about the results from Operation Unite that's been run for the last two nights here in Queensland. Over the last two nights, we've charged 574 people with a range of offences, including good order offences, assaults and drink driving. We're disappointed that this level of police enforcement is necessary to ensure community standards of behaviour are being met. We will continue to enforce the law to ensure that all members of the community can enjoy a night out in public places without their evening being ruined by a selfish few who have no regard for the rights of others. The small minority who continue to flout the law, defy police directions and destroy the amenity of others are out of step with what the community will accept as appropriate conduct. Happy to take questions. How does this rate in regards to other operations and nights as, 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 um, as sort of, I guess, the amount of people charged? Yeah. This is the fourth uh, in a series of uh, Operation Unites. The arrests and charges uh, for this last two days are slightly down, but only slightly, on the previous operations. There are obviously some environmental factors. So, you know, the last one was uh, done two weeks before Christmas last year. So in terms of the time of the year, holiday season, weather, those sorts of things have some influence. But generally as a whole, I've got to say that uh, the level of enforcement required hasn't really changed and that's a disappointment for us. Was last night a normal Saturday night, like what you'd normally be up against? Obviously there were more police around, but in terms of what the challenges you faced, was, were they particularly violent no, um, it would be fair to say that across Queensland, you know, we have police out every Friday and Saturday night and there are always good order issues, particularly in some of the bigger precincts like the Valley, the City, uh, Sunshine Coast and the Gold Coast, particularly around Surface Paradise. But um, it's very disappointing that we still have these very high numbers of people who still cannot go out and have a good time without coming to the attention of police destroying the night for other people who just want to have a good time. And, and these people don't seem to understand their concept of being able to have a good time within the limits of the law. In your release, you make special mention of the 140 drink drivers, saying that's, a, that's disappointing as well. Yeah, it is. Uh, I don't know what else we can do to get the message through to people that if you're going to drink and drive, particularly uh, in some of the more populated areas, you can expect that there will be a heavy police presence anywhere, anytime, and that if you're going to take that risk, there is a very high probability that you're going to get caught. Unfortunately, the public education that we have been conducting for decades does not still seem to be sinking in with some people. And sadly, that's reflected in still some of the very high readings that we're getting. These aren't people who are just 05, 06, just on the border, having just made a miscalculation. We're still talking uh, readings that are above 0 0.20 in some cases, and that's very, very disappointing. That's someone who's seriously impaired. Do you, do you know what the highest reading was last night? I'll be able to get those details for you, but there was certainly one uh, from memory who was uh, about 0.25 or, or higher. So again, that's, that's a not a mistake. That's not a mistake. That's just a, someone who's got a total disregard for the law and is a, a fatal accident waiting to happen sadly for them or for some innocent person. We saw um, quite a lot of vision from the Gold Coast, the drug dogs at work. Yes. I mean, they were stopping a lot of people. Are you surprised at how many people still uh, are carrying drugs or using drugs or even not when they know that these dogs could be? Well, again, that's a, a high risk that they're taking. Um, well, taking drugs for a start is a very risky occupation for your health. But uh, people who go to nightclub precincts know that um, without warning we conduct random operations involving sniffer dogs and other strategies. Uh, this is uh, a series of rolling uh, operations that have been done on the Gold Coast and people who want to go to nightclub precincts with drugs can expect that we will be there uh, unexpectedly and we will use these strategies and the fact that we caught a number of people again last night shows that this is a, a uh, crime that's still prevalent in some of those uh, precincts. Do you know how many people were caught at all? Yeah, we're, last night we caught 10 and they had a range of drugs, cocaine, uh, methamphetamine, uh, but we can give you further details from police media. Is that just on the coast? Is that just on the coast? 
That's just from that operation in the Surface Paradise and Broadbeach nightclub precincts last night, yes. Uh, we'll give you, we can give you the exact quantities, but there was uh, someone caught with multiple numbers of ecstasy tablets. Yeah. What about the violence on the street, especially in Fortitude Valley? We saw a guy who was um, lying on unconscious. He'd been hit in the um, gut, and some of the officers said at the, at the time, not police officers, ambulance officers said that it was one of the worst assaults they'd seen in, in six months or so. What are you thinking about the violence that, that we're seeing? Was there any... Um, has there been any change since Operation United started? Um, look, violence in uh, the CBD or in nightclub precincts generally is always a concern. We want to have a community where people can go out at night, enjoy themselves. We want our friends, our family to be able to go out, have a night out and not have that ruined by somebody who is either a drinking to excess and or taking drugs and they have absolutely no regard for the law. You know, they're incredibly selfish and arrogant. They think that they can go out and do as they please and they have a total disregard for what the community will expect and accept as appropriate conduct. And they just feel they can go and do as they please. And if anyone gets in their road, these are the sort of consequences that ensure. So sadly, we are seeing uh, people who are being the victims of unprovoked assaults and that's, that's very, very disappointing. And with the One Punch Can Kill campaign, potentially very deadly. Some of the arrests that we've seen are by necessity quite physical and, and you know, uh, fighting, I guess, physical force with physical force. Has there, has there been any complaints at all about excessive use of force from the weekend at all by police officers? Uh, not that I'm aware of from this weekend. Uh, we've had some injuries to our own members as a result of having to make some of these arrests. And uh, that's obviously a situation that we don't like to see either. We don't want to see police officers injured in the course of having to arrest people who show no regard for the law and uh, no regard for um, uh, directions from the police. One of the arrests, I guess I'm talking about in particular, there was one in Mackay where a man had his head slammed on the back of a police car. There's been no complaint by a person at all about that? No, I'm not familiar with that specific incident, but uh, so no, is a short answer. Uh, when will the next Operation Unite be run? Is it planned for this year or is that something that all the police commissioners talk about? Uh, it's something we talk about. Generally, we try and do it about twice a year, so I'm anticipating the next one may be in the uh, Christmas New Year period towards the end of the year. Well, we'd like to think so. But this is just an ongoing, a never-ending enforcement action until the people in the community who don't respect the law get re-educated about what's acceptable and what's not. And if that's going to take a trip to the watch house, uh, whenever they break the law, so be it until those standards of behaviour are properly understood by everybody because this is for the benefit of the good people in the community. And we all want to be able to go out and have a good time. And that shouldn't be ruined by people who just uh, will not obey the law and are totally arrogant about what they see as are, are their rights. The drink safe precincts have been running since December, I believe. Yep. You're still getting high numbers of offenders. Is drink safe? No, uh, the, uh, the formal evaluation of Drink Safe uh, hasn't yet been concluded because uh, we're not at the end of our first 12 months. But uh, anecdotally, the evidence that we're getting back from the officers in those precincts is that the extra police are having a very positive impact on the behaviour of people in those particular areas. So assaults on police are down and uh, arrests generally for good order offences are declining in those precincts. So it is having a positive impact in those particular places. There's still a number of uh, offences, I guess, breaches of the Liquor Enforcement Act detected last night. Are you, are you disappointed or, or what's your views on that? Are, are pubs and clubs learning their lesson? Well, it's, um, these operations give us the opportunity to have more staff doing more walkthroughs of hotels. Uh, and with the greater police presence, we're obviously potentially going to detect uh, offences where they're occurring. But generally across Queensland we have a very good uh, understanding with the licensees and the local liquor accords that we have in each of the districts. They work very cooperatively with us and generally they are very responsible in the way that they uh, manage their business and uh, in keeping um, unruly patrons out of the premises and serving them appropriately. That's the general uh, outcome.
generally what we're finding uh, is that licensees and their staff understand the implications that they have under the law in terms of serving intoxicated people and keeping underage people out of their establishments. You know, a range of them are moving to ID scanners and proof of ID and those sorts of things. So generally we find that they're very responsible. Uh, there were uh, a range of things where people were, uh, we had a number where um, people had liquor tipped out, you know, outside of uh, premises, those sorts of things. Um, but the actual breakdown of, a, of uh, any liquor in, uh, enforcement issues, well, we can get to you after this. Have you got any details on the uh, shooting by police of dogs in a, dog or dogs in a raid in White Rock Cairns yesterday? Yeah, um, that incident arose out of the closure of a major drug operation by the Far North Queensland Drug Squad. Police were uh, entering that premises to execute a search warrant, uh, looking for uh, evidence of drug production and distribution. Uh, they were attacked by a savage dog. And, what brand of dog? Uh, I don't know, but we'll find out for you. Yeah. And uh, the officers were forced to shoot the dog, and they did. Uh, to my knowledge, yes. Yeah, some reports have more than one. Though, so. uh, to my knowledge, no, one. Yeah. yeah. It was a vicious dog. It's previously bitten uh, someone at the house, uh, and the, the police involved there uh, had no alternative but to shoot the dog. It was unfortunate but necessary. And what was the result of the raid? Did people on charges? A number of people uh, who were living at that address have been charged with serious drug offences, including uh, drug trafficking. Um, there will be um, details, if they're not already provided, there will be details available about the ages and charges of, of those people and they'll be appearing in the Cairns Magistrates Court tomorrow. No, no, five, uh, 574 people have been either arrested or given notices to appear. So charged with offences either by direct arrest or uh, being given an NTA. Yes. Yes, that's right. So 574 people, a total of 774 charges, yes. 778. Yep. 778 charges, yes. Going back to the, uh, the dog shooting, how many shots were fired at the dog? Um, I don't know, but we'll certainly get that detail for you. Um, okay. It would appear uh, the investigations at this stage indicate that the man may have fallen uh, whilst he was attempting uh, a planking episode and it would appear on the investigations as they appear at the moment that in the course of trying to plank on the balcony on the seventh floor he uh, has tragically lost his footing and fallen to the car park below. Uh, my understanding was that he put his, uh, had put his feet outside of the balcony and was preparing to lay on the balcony rail and he overbalanced and, uh, and fell to his death. So it's a, it's a tragedy. So he had his head over top then and he fell head first? Uh, I don't know how exactly he fell, but uh, we're told from the person who was with him that that's how the incident unfolded. Is that was a partial Beg your pardon? No, there was only he and uh, another person with him. They had been um, out in, uh, in the city earlier and we're told that they may have done some planking on the way home and that uh, this was uh, to be another occasion, another episode, which tragically ended in, uh, in the man's death. Were they filming the incident? Uh, the last incident, I, I don't know. It, it is what we'd been fearing and uh, you might remember police uh, both in Victoria and locally here during the week have issued warnings to people about the dangers of this type of activity. In s some circumstances it can be fairly uh, harmless uh, but uh, as people become more and more competitive and try more and more obscure and difficult 
episodes of planking, which inevitably lead to greater levels of risk, then we were and remain concerned that this is the sort of thing that will eventuate and no one wants to see that. Well, you know, you can, someone can be planking on a park bench and that can be fairly benign and harmless. Uh, once you start taking it up seven storeys or on top of a set of traffic lights or on a set of railway lines or there are a whole range of things or on a bridge, anywhere that accentuates the risk and the daring, uh, that obviously puts it into an area not only where it can be breaking the law, it, can, it more importantly is putting the risk of the, of the person at, at significant danger. How have you spoken to family or friends of the man that was dead? How are they? Obviously, you know. um, um, I don't know um, what the attitude is of the people who were with him or what his family is, whether in fact they knew that he engaged in this sort of activity. So it's all far too early to speculate on that. But as far as we're concerned, the death of anybody in these circumstances is an absolute tragedy. And we just want to reinforce to people who might be thinking about this, that it's, it might seem like fun, but as this episode has shown, it carries great risk depending on the circumstances, the time of the night, whether people have been drinking, all of those things come into play. And the last thing we want to see is a repeat of what happened this morning. So people who want to engage in this need to think about the consequences very carefully, not just for themselves, but should something serious happen for the people around them and their families. Uh, that's still being um, still being looked at in the in the investigation. Was that this fellow's house or was it the other guy's house? In it, sorry. Uh, to my understanding, it was his residence, but we're yet to confirm that. So perhaps we'll be able to get you some confirmation of that later. Do you know how old he is? Uh, no. Do you know if the other person involved is being um, has spoken to police and, and might be charged? Uh, I'm not aware that there's any contemplation of charges, but I'm sure we'll be issuing an updated release later once investigations are more progressed. Could, could we describe him as a young man? Um, we'll be able to get confirmation. Once we're sure the next of kin have been advised, we'll be able to provide some further details about age and other personal particulars. Well, I know there's no charges at the moment. There may, have, may not be. But in such an instance where someone dies from such behaviour, Uh, look, nothing comes immediately to mind um, when you say someone might be egging them on. Obviously, the primary responsibility always remains with the person doing the act um, they, to estimate the risk and to think about the consequences of what they're going to do. There's no suggestion, as far as I'm aware in this case, that there was anything other than a voluntary act. But we will obviously, all of those things will be investigated in a matter that will have to be ultimately reviewed by the coroner. So, so there's no Uh, there is, depending on where they do it, if you, you know, to climb onto an unauthorised structure such as a bridge, it's very similar, you know, base jumping, that sort of activity, it depends where you go to do it, uh, you can bring yourself into the realm of, uh, of having committed an offence. Is that the, sorry, is that unauthorised Yes, yes. To my knowledge, yes, absolutely. It's only a very recent phenomenon. We had our first sort of episode involving the police earlier this week where a young man was charged with planking on a police car at the uh, police station. And it's also become quite prevalent in Victoria, caused some concern down there. Do you know of any other injuries or deaths throughout Australia or the world? Uh, I don't personally know. So, um, so it could be Australia's first death? Um, yeah. I don't know, I and mean, certainly uh, it's just uh, a tragedy for everybody, for the for uh, the person, his family, and uh, yeah, we we would like it to be the last. Do you know what the device they were using to, to film it with or, or shoot it with? 